Thanks, guys. Uh, yesterday, Andy uh, Slamans started a story uh, about how he woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and he checked his, uh, his sales figures and he had managed to sell out his inventory of $13,000 in the few hours that he'd uh, just finished launching a promotion. Uh, in 2015, a couple of months after I first started, in fact, it was about six weeks after I started selling on Amazon.com in the United States with my product, I managed to sell $53,000 of inventory in 45 minutes with exactly the same failed promotion. Managed to retrieve some of that stock, but it ended up being around about 45 grand in 45 minutes. So, yeah, just thought I'd share that as a bit of a downer. And I'm super excited to be here talking about Amazon Australia. Uh, I'm actually super more excited about being at the summit here with you guys sourcing and networking and doing that sort of stuff than uh, perhaps the actual platform of Amazon Australia. But I'm going to try and give you the warts and all of how it's actually going. So, a little bit, bit, bit about me as usual is, uh, you know, I've been doing e-commerce since 2001. I invented a product back in 1992 actually that blocks sound as well as light. It doesn't block a lot of sound, but it blocks a bit of light. So, there was always a part-time gig. It's called the Hibermate. And uh, in 2013, I jumped on Kickstarter, uh, I redeveloped the product, jumped on Kickstarter, raised up about $110,000 to validate that the new design was probably going to be okay. It wasn't okay, the Kickstarter backers didn't like it much, so I came to Hong Kong, fixed the product in 2014, and launched on Amazon in the United States in 2015. So, I also host the Australian Seller Podcast, so if anybody wants to come on the show, come and see me after this. Uh, and obviously I talk a lot about Amazon, e-commerce, bit of wholesaling, bit of dropshipping, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, I've had a few mistakes as I told you right at the beginning and I've also had some success. So, let's just sort of go through the market and let's look at Australia. So, we've got 25 million people, so we're, we're less than a tenth the size of the United States market and probably a fifth of the size, is that right? I don't know, 5% of say Europe. So, the market's pretty small. Um, We've got a lot of we've very great internet usage. E-commerce sales are growing at about 18% per year. Uh, we're doing around about 26 billion in sales, which is pretty cool. But again, it's a it's a drop in the bucket compared to someone like an Amazon itself. Um, so a lot like Canada, we're a big country with a very sparsely populated population. Does that make sense? Um, so what else is going on? So we're already spending about 700 million dollars or a billion dollars on Amazon.com anyway. When, uh, when Amazon sort of announced that they were coming to Australia. Uh, we've had the longest run of uninterrupted economic growth, I think, in almost any country's history. Around about 27 years and still going. We, we skated through the, the GFC in 2008 and 9, 10 because we dig a lot of shit out of the ground and the Chinese want to buy it from us, which is pretty, we were very lucky. We are the lucky country. Eventually, we're going to run out of stuff to dig, but there's still a lot of stuff in the ground. Um, Sort of company tax rate wise for us, we, we pay around about 27.5. That's actually going to drop a little bit in, in the coming years. The government's sort of realising that taxes are probably slightly too high for companies. We're not really attracting as much investment, say, compared to what's happening in the United States or other countries indeed. Um, you know, and we're a very stable kind of, it's a very good place to invest and do business because the government's stable and the banks are strong and, you know, all that stuff. Um, oh, I've mentioned the Canada thing, so we don't have as many guns. So uh, we're generally, Pretty wealthy. I'm not wealthy at all, but a lot of Australians actually have a shit ton of money. Um, a lot of us are born overseas, so we're just like a lot of uh, you know, like the UK and throughout Europe and the United States, and you know, um, we're a very multicultural uh, society, very secular. So, you know, all everything's tolerated. All religions are tolerated. Uh, we recently passed a gay marriage law and all that sort of stuff too, which is fantastic. So we're very progressive. I hope some parts aren't, but most of us are pretty progressive. Uh, we speak the Queen's accent, so what this means is that we have excellent liter. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Uh, we've got we've got free healthcare. Can we just? All right, so just we've got free healthcare. We can't show that slide. It's a um, and we're pretty easy going, but we're a bit cynical as well, as you're about to learn. Um, so just in, if you're going to be doing any kind of copywriting on, on Amazon in, US, in Australia, and you're from the US or, or somewhere that's not sort of the UK, uh, you know we we sort of we have different ways of spelling and describing things, so just be really careful about the vernacular and when you're doing it, you know, don't just send your, thank you, Paul. Uh, and we're organised, but not all, we're organised and stuff like that. Well, we're not well, Aussies, we're Aussies. So, um, we love this stuff. Oh. If I ever feel really down and upset about something, 
I just go to, go to Amazon and I read the reviews about <laughs> Vegemite. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, I was only cu curious, but yuck. <laughs> and it's just so fun. This, yeah, actually, Vegemite actually sells around about, I don't know, I think from all listings, there's probably about twenty to $25,000 in sales of this stuff goes out on Amazon.com every month. And I think it's probably because uh, there's a lot of expat Australians that live in the United States. Um, all right, so I had to put this up because I used to be a cartographer. Does anybody know what a cartographer is? Good. Will? Oh, it's a little weak maps. Excellent. You win the first jar of the Vegemite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boom. Congratulations. All right, so you can, see, you can see from the map that Australia is very, we've got a lot of stuff happening on the East Coast. So, um, here is where Amazon opened up its very first fulfillment centre, uh, sort of around this time, like, well, it, was, it, it, it had ordered it, but, or not ordered it, you can't order a fulfillment centre off Amazon, okay? But it, it basically bought one and then set it up so that it was ready to roll. So this is Melbourne, this is my hometown. You've got little Hobart and Tasmania down here. Uh, and then they've just opened a, a much bigger one, a fulfillment centre up here in Sydney as well. And they're not telling us what else they're going to do, but we would expect probably another one up here in Brisbane, and then possibly one over here in Perth later on. <laughs> but I don't, I, I don't know inside information about what Amazon's plans are. What's the capital of Australia? Canberra. Who said Canberra? Congratulations, you get another one. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone pass that back up to the man with the long hair? Okay. Um, so a bit of a timeline, so 2017 they announced that they were coming, um, in, in 20, so they, they only had 500 third party invite only sellers that, that launched on the platform and they started with about 7.5 million aces which isn't very many products, including variations everything else. Uh, there was a lot of excitement, there was a lot of anticipation uh, and then, so they launched uh, and then in 2015, oh, sorry, l l early this year they opened up FBA to, to third party sellers which is pretty exciting. Uh, and then in July, they launched Amazon Prime. So, uh, and, and now they're in a really big push to try and get uh, Prime customers onto the platform. So, uh, and it was reported in, the, in, in August this year that in fact Amazon had turned over around about $16 million on Amazon.com.au um, Amazon in December. Um, and 10 million of those sales were actually generated by uh, allegedly these 500 people, which is like $20,000 know, per seller. Seems a bit weird to me, but anyway. Before Amazon came though, a lot of the businesses in Australia were scared. And this is the head of West Farmers, Richard Goiter. And you know, he was saying that Amazon, when they come, West Farmers is a massive um, conglomerate in, in Australia. And he was saying, oh, they're gonna eat out breakfast, lunches, lunches and dinners, and all that sort of stuff. And so there's a lot of fear from, from retailers and traditional bricks and mortar, because we'd seen what had happened in the United States, in particular with Amazon. So let's talk about the market. Where, where are Australians visiting? What kind of shopping sites are Australians visiting? And so ebay.com.au, it's been around for a long time and Australians love eBay. So Amazon had a bit of competition. You can see there that Amazon.com, so the American site, is around 111 million people uh, a year visit there and so on and so forth. A lot of these brands, you won't even know who they are. But I'll take you through some of the competitors. So I mentioned eBay. Um, we love eBay. Kogan's another big one. We've got Catch, Gumtree, and of course you would have heard of Costco. So eBay's been around for ages. And they responded quickly. eBay hadn't been doing anything until Amazon announced that they were coming. And they basically said, right, you're not allowed to use Amazon's fulfillment service to fulfill e um, eBay orders. So you can't drop ship out of Amazon. And in response as well, eBay launched eBay Plus, which is a sort of almost like a prime, almost like an, a, an FBA sort of thing, but not quite. Sort of a seller fulfilled FBA, I guess it's probably seller fulfilled prime. And then you got Rosalind Kogan. Now he started in 26 to, uh, 2006. And he sold uh, basically his own brand of private label TVs and electronics and stuff like that. And he has grown this business into a, a big business for Australia. And he also has a third party marketplace. So Amazon isn't, you know, it's come to Australia, but it's actually up against some pretty serious, well established competitors. 8 million email subscribers is what Rosalind Kogan claims. That's about you know, a third of Australia's population. I'm, I'm an email subscriber. He goes hard and he's, he's quite a big business. Then you've got Catch, there's another sort of third party marketplace that's open as well. And uh, they're heading towards the Australian Stock Exchange this year, later this year, and their growth is phenomenal too. Uh, you've got Gumtree, uh, they get a lot of visits. Uh, you know, it's traditionally been a classified thing, used stuff, but they're also starting to push hard in response to Amazon's um, 
presence in Australia to, uh, you know, to sort of grow sort of brand new and new, new items as well and helping business to do that. Then you've got Costco. We love Costco as well. So traditionally it's always been, you know, destination shopping, load up your truck full of, you know, bulk toilet paper or whatever you're doing and get the hell out of there. Uh, but this is the big one, the big announcement is that Costco is building, you know, some 50 million size square metre thing of football fields and, you know, they're going on for an online onslaught to take Amazon on and try and knock them out before they even get started. So let's talk about Amazon Australia versus Amazon.com. So you got, you can kind of read all that stuff, but we don't have brand registry down there. Uh, we've got a little bit of promotion, buy one, get one, percentage off free shipping, that's about it. There's none of this other stuff like social media promo codes or anything, anything like that. We've now got FBA. Um, you can't do a lightning deal unless you're invited. Uh, you know, there's flat file inventory upload. Why do they even put that in there? I don't know. And then we don't have storefronts. Uh, we don't have B2B. There's no sponsored ads, and that's probably a big kick, kicker right at the moment. And I don't, I've asked some people that I know in Amazon to tell me when it's coming, but they won't tell me. Uh, we don't get enhanced brand content. There's no early review program, nothing like that. So you're pretty much on your own. Uh, this is what Seller Central looks like. This is my little account. You kind of see here, I do about 25,000 a month in the United States. At the moment, I'm doing $349 a month. So that just sort of gives you the kind of difference uh, of what's going on. You also see too, there's no advertising up here. There's no B2B, there's no stuff either. Uh, so let's talk about the tools that work with Amazon Australia. So if you're going to do this, let's see what works. So, Egro has responded very quickly. I'd never even heard of these guys until there was some thing I saw in a Facebook group saying, you know, there's a new jungle scout for, for Amazon Australia called Egro. No idea how accurate it is. Haven't really had a lot of time to see. Um, I don't know how many data points they've got. Uh, jungle scout has said, I saw Greg Mercer in a webinar in Australia saying that he was bringing out jungle scout later this year. He wanted to get more data and more data points to be able to figure out what's actually happening. But Egro's got the jump. So a lot of Australian sellers have signed up to this. And you'll also see here, like this is, uh, a search for the, uh, all the best sellers in the home and kitchen or maybe household and something or other category, you know, sort of eight grand a month. You know, I mean, it's just the scale compared to, to the United States for the top, you know, number one best seller stuff is a lot different. Um, really, at the scale that we're at with Amazon Australia, you know, we've got Keeper. So this is like a Ravensburger puzzle. And you can kind of see the best seller rank go boom. He sold one and he didn't sell one. <laughs> boom. And he sold one, and he's had about seven sales in about three months. Yeah, that's that sort of level that you can kind of use a bit of intel to see what the hell's going on in a, in a product that you might be interested in potentially selling on Amazon Australia. Uh, what else we got? Oh, and Feedback 5 uh, announced pretty quickly. In fact, just before Amazon even opened, they, they announced that they are supporting Amazon Australia. So you can actually get in touch with customers uh, via you know, follow-up email sequences and stuff like that. We've got to keep moving here. Uh, so what's good? So we've got less saturated categories, obviously. Uh, we've got the retail sales price is actually quite a lot higher. Um, FBA, most sellers haven't actually even, they don't even know how FBA works. So the, most of them are still doing FBM like when they first started on the platform back in December last year, we didn't have FBA. So there's a bit of an, a possibility there that you can get your products into an FBA warehouse and do quite well. Um, they're nowhere near as sophisticated. Most people, most sellers don't even know how the buy box works or what the offers are. The listings are pretty bad because most people have uploaded all their inventory using a flat file. So there's one picture and a few bullets and hardly any description. Um, customers, yeah, we're, we're used to reviewing uh, our experiences on eBay and uh, eBay almost forces you to do that. So a lot of, um, it's quite easy to get reviews on Amazon Australia at the moment. Um, and then also, of course, oh, I just said this is like a bonus thing. Uh, with one of my products, I listed it on Amazon Australia with the same SKU and the same UPC and this is what's happened, is that the reviews have come across from Amazon.com. You see up here it says there are no local customer reviews yet, but on that listing, if people scroll to the bottom, they'll be able to see the reviews from the US. Um, so as long as you've got, you're matching up all your SKUs and stuff. So what's bad? So there's no individual uh, seller plan. So you've got to pay 50, it's around about 50 to $55 a month to, uh, to play. Um, sales are pretty slow for most of the products as you've seen. Uh, if you're from the United States, then we use metric sizes and that sort of stuff. There's no feet, no pounds, no inches, really. Um, don't worry about the goods and services tax. I'll talk about that in a minute. You can't sort of link your seller account. You know, like you, in the US, you've sort of got Mexico, Canada, and, and, and the US. And Europe's all sort of connected. You can't do that in Australia. You can't link to anything else. Um, this is a really big one. Our foreign exchange rate with the United States in particular 
is, is heading towards you know, maybe 60 cents in a year. I mean, I'm not a foreign, foreign currency expert. What it means is that for every Australian dollar, you're only going to get 60, uh, 70 US cents back at the moment. So you've got to keep an eye on the volatility of the exchange rate. Super important to, to say you, can know, you know your numbers. Um, so there's a lot of categories that aren't available. I think they've just opened up um, pets and I think pantry as well. So you can, they've got dry goods and tin goods, that sort of stuff. So a bit of food starting to show up on the platform as well. Um, all right, what's down right? I don't think this is that ugly, but you can't use Alexa to say, hey, Alexa, reorder me some you know, nappies. They haven't actually hooked Alexa up to, uh, to the Amazon platform yet. Um, it's nowhere near as fully featured. You don't get the sponsored ads, and I still think that's the, the really, really deal-breaking moment for me. And a lot of third-party sellers are just going, really? Is this all you guys can do? And slow, sales are really slow. I mean, really effing slow. So who knows what that is? Exactly. Who said one back first? No, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Will. Okay. Who's, did you say one back? Who said? Great. Are you from Australia? You don't get one. Who else? <laughs> all right. If you, if you live, all right. I've got to get. I've got to keep moving. I can't mess about. That's all I got. I got no more Vegemite. Okay. At least you'll eat it. Okay. <laughs> And, and that there is basically, my, as my mum, for some reason, says it's slower than a wombat walking backwards. They're pretty slow. You know, um, so, you know, kind of the press is sort of getting involved too. You know, they're, they're sort of, it's a bit of a feeding frenzy. It has been earlier this year. This was in April. Uh, you know, some of these brands had set up. It's been a lot of effort, a lot of time getting set up in Amazon Australia. Now they're starting to pull out. All right, so let's get into the nitty grits. How to invade Australia. So, if you look, a lot of accountants that you might approach in Australia, if you want to, you know, get some legal and, and accounting advice, will say, "Oh, you've got to do all this stuff. You've got to, you know, um, register for a GST and register for um, this ARBM, which is an Australian registered business number. As a foreign entity, you need to sort of register with our ASIC, which is the Australian Sur Securities and Exchange Commission or something." Um, so I'll just quickly race through that. So these are all the things that you need to do. So you have to pay an Australian accountant to sort of register your business. If you intend to sell more than $75,000 on Amazon Australia, and I don't think there's probably anybody that's doing that right now. Um, so then if you're selling less than 20, 75 grand a year, then just do what Amazon tells you to do, which is you know, the usual stuff when you're signing up for an Amazon store. Okay, and again, you can read all this stuff. And in fact, it's on Amazon's website. So if you go up to the sell link on amazon.com.au, uh, you'll be taken to this screen. First, it'll show you the benefits, but just head over to the FAQ over here. And, uh, and, and you'll notice here that they're, they're offering a lot of goodies and incentives for sellers to, to get onto the platform and start expanding their catalog. Uh, and then, you know, as you scroll down, you'll see all the things that you need to do, which is repeating what I just sort of had in the previous slide. Um, so at the moment too, Amazon's only going to pay into a local Australian business account. So you can't sort of, there's no, you know like in the States you can get paid in Australian dollars, or you can get paid in pounds or whatever, or Euro, euros, you can't do that. So it's very tricky to get an Australian bank account if you're a foreigner, which is the same in anywhere. Um, so obviously you probably want to use RFX or World First or, or one of these other services to get paid in Australian dollars and they'll remit it back into your home currency that way. Okay. They'll, they'll create an Australian bank account for you on your behalf. Freight forwarding, importing and freight. So really, definitely, definitely recommend using an, uh, a local domestic Australian freight forwarding customs broker. <coughs> so they'll sort of this GST. Now GST stands for Goods and Services Tax. Everything in Australia pretty much uh, has a tax of 10%. It's like a sales tax, it's VAT for Australia. Um, so when you import something though, you've got to pay GST on it, so there's a bit of extra cost to the government um, that, that the, the suppliers who are helping you to you know, that anything that you're buying, like an imp if you're importing from somebody, they're going to add an extra 10%, which you can't get back if you're not registered for GST. Uh, good thing, though, is that we are actually a lot of it, um, a lot of Australia has a lot of fr uh, free trade agreements. So all this tariff stuff, you know, we've been talking about tariffs and how we get around the tariffs. I actually think one of the ways that you can do it, is, <laughs> perhaps not with Australia, but you can also look to go, well, if, if China and, 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 and the United States have, a, have a, this 25% tariff thing happening, why not expand your business or, or you know, spread the risk out and go to Canada, which don't? Or the United States, uh, or the United Kingdom, uh, the, yeah, the United Kingdom, the EU, possibly the Australian marketplace, possibly Japan. So you can kind of grow business that way and just avoid, you know, perhaps a, you know, it's a bit risky, but it's just another idea. Um, all right, we've got really, really strict quarantine laws as well. So the TGA, which is a Therapeutic Goods Association, 
it's just like the FDA, they're pretty strict about what is allowed in and what's allowed out, so make sure that you check all of the local label law laws as well. They're pretty similar to the US, but actually I don't think they're quite as bad. But again, get some advice if you're going to bring something in, particularly if it's food or, or beauty and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I got caught up a couple of years ago, I was brought some wooden pallets in from, the, uh, from China, and that got held off for ages while they had to fumigate, they charged me, so use plastic pallets if you're bringing in that sort of quantity. Um, I'm not a tax expert, so this sign's got sharp edges, I don't even know why I put that in there, but um, so if you don't register for GST, you're not going to be able to get the money back from the government when you pay somebody for, for some help, and then you're going to need this ARBN, ARBN number, which I, I talked about earlier. So as I said, you've got 10% GST on everything. Um, so local companies collect the GST, uh, and then we have to give it back to the government every quarter. We have a, what's called a business activity statement, most, most quarters, every quarter. Um, that Amazon will not collect the 10% GST for you. So as an international seller, you actually get to keep it. So there's a bit of an advantage coming to Amazon Australia. Um, so I'll just give you a quick example. If you sold a thousand bucks worth of stuff, you would have collected $100 in GST. Um, you would have paid possibly, say, $40 GST out of this sort of mythical transac uh, transaction sort of story to, I don't know, uh, 40 bucks. Um, but you can't claim the 40 bucks back. So you get to keep the 60. Um, income taxes. So if you've got a DTA or a double taxation agreement with another country, and um, Australia does have a lot of DTAs with most countries, so including the USA, all throughout Europe, South Korea, China, all that sort of stuff, there's heaps of them. Have a look on the, on the just type it into Google. Um, except for Hong Kong, interestingly, which is a bit weird. Um, you don't have to pay any annual company tax for the monies that you've earned in Australia. You only pay it when it's home, when you're you know, in your home country for any money that you, you uh, repatriate back to your wherever you live. So is it really worth it? So as a seller, early on most sellers said it wasn't worth it and they started leaving and the press were having an absolute field day as I've talked about and there's been this big sort of thing in Australia in the press um, around, you know, this sort of, we had Starbucks come marching in going, we, we know coffee, you know, and, and you guys are going to drink our coffee and we told them to get stuffed and they eventually put their uh, tail between their legs. There's a little bit of licensing that's still going on but for all intents and purposes, Starbucks is gone. And so there's been this big comparison. Could Amazon, this big, 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 big company, be the next kind of you know, disaster you know, walking into a cricket bat of, you know, <coughs> get out. Um, and then, so, you know, like you get a lot of comments on these new articles as well, and the sentiment um, often from, uh, you know, sellers who have typically been on eBay uh, you know, making a pretty good living and they've sort of switched and, and, and focused in a bit on Amazon Australia, you know, total disaster. Uh, stop paying, you know, I don't know, it's just a, it just hasn't been great. The sentiment is bad from the seller point of view. So what, they, what Amazon's been trying to do, so they've, dressed, they've been kind of spinning the wheels and spinning the, the language around it, but basically what they've done is stop charging us to sell on the platform and giving us our money back to stop us from leaving and stop the bleeding. Uh, consumer sentiment. So a lot of Australians, uh, you know, as, as you can read, have uh, rejected Amazon. Uh, and then where, what really did it, in fact, was the uh, was it Amazon. Uh, the Australian government said to Amazon, any Australian that makes a purchase, say on Amazon.com, Amazon, you need to collect 10% of the of this purchase price, the GST, and you need to give it back to us. So Amazon said, well, we're not doing that. That's too much overhead for our company. So we're going to stop Australians from shopping on Amazon.com. So we can still visit the site, but we can't add anything to cart, we can't get anything delivered to Australia. Boy, do the Australians hate that. So, and also on top of that, Australians don't really want to, because the value is not there at the moment. We don't want to fork out $85 a year for, we've already got Netflix and all these other things that Amazon's offering, and, and two day sh free shipping on orders over 50 or 60 bucks, you know, it's just not worth it. Um, when Megler asked me to come and talk at this event, I said, do you really want me to come over here and hit everybody over the head with that? Be Mr. Danny Downer? <laughs> but anyway, I'm here. How are we going? Is everybody, is it all okay? We're all good? Great, yeah, we're getting some nods, okay. Um, so yeah, the Australians actually don't understand that there are third party sellers on Amazon. They could just kind of, it's like Amazon. They just think it's Amazon selling stuff. So then what's really, I think, hurt a lot of the consumer sentiment as well is this idea of international Amazon arbors. You see this a lot in Japan. So what happens, what I'm saying here is, is that you get, uh, say, a USA seller who's selling a garlic press, and then, or she, let's not get too sexist about it, but they're selling a garlic press in the United States for 19.95, for example. And what they were doing was they were creating listings in Australia 
uh, you know, $199. And so if an Australian bought a garlic press on, on Amazon.com.au for $199 without that stupid, uh, the USA seller would just do a fulfillment order out of the United States and ship it to Australia. And that caused a big problem because Amazon wasn't watching this. They weren't realising what was going on in Australia. So I've got my assistant to just quickly give me some comparisons here. So we've got things like uh, uh, this sort of spice rack. Buy it in the US for 32 bucks, buy it in Australia, 405. How do you reckon that's going to go down? Don't forget, there's almost a billion dollars worth of sales were going through Amazon.com anyway from Australia. So we weren't stupid. Um, uh, what's this thing? A radio, 80 bucks. Some books. Uh, what is that thing? I don't know, another spice rack. So then, oh, if you want to see what trolling looks like, just head over to the Facebook Australia's, Amazon Australia Facebook page. I feel sorry for Pritivy and, and Haida who were trying to sort of, you know, the, the, the consumer sentiments, you know, you're not supposed to be performing extortion, you know, and Amazon's like, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on. And then you sort of get these kind of comments as well, I'll tell you, you know, Blake Blood, it's a complete rip-off, all that sort of stuff too, so. Anyway, if you're still interested, what would you sell? This is a nervous laugh. So, ooh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of survival gear, I think. <laughs> uh, so head over to Australia's Amazon Australia bestsellers. Uh, this I love this. This is like the bestseller for the kitchen and dining category, is it? Yeah, all the bestsellers. So we've got 8,000 reviews, 1,500 reviews, 28,000 reviews. Same category, Amazon Australia. 55. None. Number one best-selling product has nothing. <laughs> Number three best-seller product has nothing. This one here's got 56. Yeah, this guy knows what he's doing, actually. He's pretty good. Um, here's a, this is a product page, this guy. So it's only about 6,200 a month, so around about 70-something thousand Australian dollars. If everything, you know. He's done, done a few lightning deals as well. So he's obviously a pretty, pretty in-bed um, seller on Amazon.com.au. If you're into wholesaling, Bernie, are you here? I met you, yeah, that's right, we were talking about, you know, there's, there's wholesaling opportunities in Amazon Australia because a lot of three par third party sellers don't actually understand it, how the buy box works, how offers work, how, buy, you know, um, rotation of the buy box works with equal offers, that sort of stuff. Um, and a lot of third party sellers who are wholesaling are just doing merchant fulfilled, so they're not even using, that, you know, FBA, which you can, you can own the buy box if you've got FBA against other sellers that don't. Um, Australian manufacturers and distributors, you know, in the United States, as Bernie was telling me earlier, uh, you know, a lot of the, the manufacturers, distributors and, 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 and whatever, are just sort of like, oh, you want to wholesale my stuff? Get, and you want to sell it on Amazon? I've, I've had fielded five phone calls today. Um, we're not interested. So, um, and Australian distributors and, and consumer brands have no, um, you know, they're, they're happy to sell it if you want to sell on Amazon, if you're stupid enough. Anyway. Um, and there's sort of software development. So you've already seen Feedback 5, you've seen Negro, you've seen Keeper. Um, you know, I think that there's a real opportunity if you're into software development, potentially to, to build out a suite of tools around to help Australian sellers and to help grow the platform. Um, will it succeed? I think it actually will. I do. I know after all this negativity, I actually think they're eventually going to get there. Amazon only lost around about 9.8 million um, in the last financial year, which is a, not very much compared to, you know, for, for Jeff, it's, you know, it's pocket money for his kids, you know, let's so, say. Uh, whereas in the, in the press, it was like a whopping $8.9 million loss, you know, reported by Amazon. So it's a really good time, actually, to be doing what the, the what was it, that uh, just diffuser guy was doing. He's getting set up and he's getting the reviews and getting that early mover advantage. So, you know, get set up, get the reviews. If you know what you're doing, you know how, and we all pretty much know how Amazon's algorithm works, right? You can, you can drive some, some, uh, some external outside-in traffic, say from Facebook, Australians love Facebook, and you can generate your coupon codes and get your sales going. It's an absolute doddle, doddle. That means really easy to rank on Amazon Australia because no one else knows how to do it. So it's kind of like a 95-5 rule. You know the 80-20, this is like, just if, you get, if you're gonna do 100 cartons out of, you know, out of China and you're gonna ship 95 of them out to the United States, and just put five units or something really small into Amazon Australia and, uh, and just see how it's going for you. Um, oh, this is it, I'm done. How are we going? Wow. Thank you. Let's do a Q&A. <laughs> um, so yeah, 
yeah, just jump, jump. If you want to learn a bit more about how to sell on Amazon, which you don't need to, but I've got a few couple of modules now about uh, how to sell on Amazon Australia and how, what tools are working and how to do a bit of product research, that sort of stuff. Uh, I've got a few modules there. It's only a couple hundred bucks, so jump on if you want to. Uh, we've got a coupon code global. Uh, this is the accountancy firm that sort of helped me um, put this slide, uh, slide deck together on my podcast. I spoke, I spoke to Arnie, Arnie Shields over at Dom and Bateman. Uh, and then if you're ever in Melbourne, join the Meetup Group and come and hang out with us. It's, uh, it'd be really cool. Um, and then I've got a consultancy firm in Australia as well. And there's my phone number. Add a plus six one to that if you want to get in touch with me by phone. But please don't ring me at like you know midday your time, <laughs> expecting me to get up at 3 a.m. and answer the phone. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then my podcast as well, theaustralianseller.com. So jump on and have a listen. Um, Chris Davies been featured on the show. Thank you so much for coming on earlier this year, Chris, and a handful of others as well. So and Megla, of course. Sorry, Megla. Yes. <laughs> Just kind of how this whole thing started. <laughs> Q and A. Let's go. Okay, I don't think we have time for Q&A, Chris, so, um, but Chris is going to be around, so if anyone has questions, you can uh, reach out to him during the networking break. That sounds good, and I'll be All moderating right. the panel as well yes, uh, a little bit later, later too. today. It'll be really fun. Brilliant. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, Chris. Thank you.